I, I am, yes. Thank you very much. I, 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 it just occurred to me, actually, that when we get back from a couple of weeks working in the United States, the first thing we do is uh, to actually go to our local Chinese restaurant. But uh, there we go. Anyway, <laughs> so I thought I'd better tell you about this because uh, this is a solution uh, which you could only actually do, so far as I'm aware, using Forth. So when we started... Uh, Oops, where's my mouse gone? There we are. When we started moving our main application away from Windows and uh, into Linux, uh, we had been using the good old Windows registry quite extensively. And uh, we thought this was a really good bit of Windows. But, um, you know, this is uh, the re Windows registry, if you're not familiar with it, is a hierarchical database, basically. Um, unfortunately, uh, Microsoft gradually make the, made the registry less and less useful over the years. Uh, but we were really hoping that when we moved to Linux that we, there would be some equivalent. But there really isn't. There's no good hierarchical database that we are aware of in Linux. So we started looking at what we'd used the Windows registry for, and we divided it into four classifications. So there's basic configuration data. So uh, the program needs to know where to find the database, for example. And that's actually quite a small amount of information. There is the system configuration data. And that is a huge amount of information there. Uh, what we're doing here is automating large commercial laundries. And uh, every installation is different. And there's an enormous amount of different information which you have to put in to configure the system. So. A typical amount of a typical piece of information there is how many kilos do you put into a washing machine? And just to put this uh, in context, uh, a typical washing machine that we're dealing with here um, has about one and a half tons of washing, that is dry weight of washing in it at any one time. But then there is a little bit of uh, per PC configuration data. For example, are you allowed to do this on this particular PC? You don't want somebody. Um, standing next to a washing machine changing the settings on the sorting area or something like that. And then we were also using the Windows registry because it was so easy to read and write it, you could use it for storing small amounts of persistent data. Uh, so that, for example, uh, when you reran a report, it came back with the same selection options that you'd use last time. So uh, what are we going to do? Um, how, we, how do we actually edit this, this data? Well, the first thing is that the basic configuration data obviously has to be set manually before the program will run. Otherwise, for example, you can't find out where the database is. The system configuration data on the Windows system, um, this was partly done by a large number of different dialog boxes. Uh, but some of it, you actually had to dive into the registry, the Windows registry editor to set stuff. Uh, really, dialog boxes are essential for managing this complexity properly. Then there was the PC configuration data. Again, that was simple and could be set manually. And then, of course, the, the persistent data uh, really never needed setting at all because this was set by the actual usage. So what were we going to replace the register with? Uh, so items A, C, and D um, we replaced with configuration files. It was item B, the lots of configuration data, which gave us the problem. Uh, I'll just briefly tell you about configuration files in Linux. There's loads of different possibilities. libconfig is our favorite. And here is a typical interface uh, to one of the configuration files where um, we specify um, the details of the uh, data that we want to enforce, that we want to put the configuration data into, uh, the name of the data, and default values. And then we have a word on the right hand side, uh, which deals with either string data or uh, value data. So that's pretty straightforward. But what we're going to do about system configuration data, there's a huge amount of it. It needs to be easily editable. Although, in fact, it's only edited by the configuration engineer. That's one of our own people who is actually getting the system installed there. It needs to be very structured. Um, a lot of this data needs 
to be accessible from a wide variety of devices uh, all over the control network. Um, it needs to be very flexible, and when we come across a new thing that we need to automate, we need to be able to extend it easily. So all this suggests that this data needs to go in a database table and that it should be edited with a structured tabbed dialog box. And of course, the dialog box has to be dynamically created because the data that you are editing is variable. And so uh, this is what a typical uh, tab setting on the editing, the uh, system settings editing dialog looks like. So this is a double layered tab. And down the le left hand side, we have the principal tabs. And down next to us over there, if you can see my cursor, that's a second layer of tabs. And what we're doing here is we are configuring the quad load cell to Ethernet units. When you're automating a laundry, you're weighing stuff all over the place. And uh, this is, you know, these are very large factories, so everything is connected on the network. And uh, the, the load cells, if you're not familiar with them, uh, basically um, convert weight into something or other. And so we plug load cells in one end and we plug Ethernet in the other end. And on our central control system, we can then see the weight. So for each unit there, we have to set up an IP address. There's various different types of these. So we have a version number and the base AX number is in the soft PLC. This tells us uh, which uh, analog values are going to be put into the PLC program. And then correspondingly in our database, we have a table like this. And uh, we have, I'll just explain to uh, in the next slide how these are applied and correspond with the um, uh, tabbed dialog box there. So main group, um, that gives you the, uh, all the names of the main tabs. Uh, you can have um, either indexed or uh, sub-tabbed groups after that. So this one is illustrating um, an index there rather than a subgroup. Uh, you've got the setting itself. Um, everything's in the database, so you put it in and get it out as strings, um, even if it's a numeric value. And then you've got the description, which automatically appears in your dialog box there. So that hasn't covered. Oh, a display order down the bottom that enables you to present the data in a logical order. So there are three more things that I didn't cover in the previous slide. You probably saw that there is val name, and this is the name of a fourth value type word. And val index is used to indicate whether it is an individual fourth value or if it's an indexed value, which index it goes into. And then we've got a type which can define rules in strings and so forth. And now for the radical bit. So during compilation, this is during compilation and at quite an early stage in the compilation process, first of all, we read in the configuration file, which gives us the information as to how we can get to the database. And then we read in that database settings table. And this is now the radical bit, because for every val name in that database settings table, we do a little find to see if that already exists as a fourth word. And if it does not exist, we dynamically create a value or a v index or a string index according to the settings of val index and the type. And then we set the actual initial or default value. After we've done that, the words which we've dynamically created can then be used in the rest of the compilation process. So basically what we're doing here is we are creating new fourth words, not from code, but from entries in a database table. And I don't believe that there's any language other than fourth that you could actually use to do that. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much, Nick. Are there any questions for Nick? Is that uh, Glenn? Is it there? I think. Yes. Um, sorry, I'm a bit in the dark here. Let's brighten it up a bit. There we go. Um, 
Yeah. So, what uh, what motivated your move away from Windows to um, to Linux? Uh, we made a policy decision about uh, three years ago. Um, Windows peaked, I think, with Windows XP, and uh, we we were putting in control systems in which uh, the soft PLC actually went inside a Windows XP uh, machine. And we set these running and we'd come back a year and a half later or something like that. And the program had been running uninterrupted for a year and a half. And then gradually over the years, Windows was made worse and worse and worse until it got to the stage where it really can't be used as part of a control system. Um, it stops you from doing all the things that you really need to do as a control system. You know, Windows is oriented these days, firstly, to business um, applications, office applications, and secondly, as far as I can see, to put in silly games or something like that. So we started experimenting with Linux, and it was just like a breath of fresh air. Suddenly, all the things that we couldn't do in Windows anymore, we can now do straightforwardly and easily and I, i'm absolutely convinced that this is a, a really good decision mm -hmm. anybody else has got a question uh i would like to ask something um so um you have the basic definition in forms but uh, then you also have to adopt the database. So is there any automatic uh, between them? So if you say you want to create a new field in the database, can you also make this in as an entry in your uh, in your configuration or do you have to do this separately? Um, if, if I'm making, if I need a new um, configuration setting and it is a just a single setting, uh, then I just type an entry straight into the database. And this uh, not only um, puts the fourth value name in, um, it also gives you a default value, and it also describes where in your settings dialog box you want this uh, new setting to be presented. So for a single value, that it's very easy to just type it all straight into the database. Um, for more complex structures and indices of um, settings, then I usually use a one-off control word, which actually loads the database table for me. And uh, when you say you define the word in the database, what happens if the database has a problem or, you know, somebody deletes the entry, but your source code relies on that word being defined? Do you have a catch? -up? Oh, I see. Uh, I mean, database tables like that um, are obviously extremely valuable things, and they tend to be backed up uh, extremely frequently. And of course, we have mechanisms. Uh, you know, we're looking after these uh, these systems, and we have mechanisms for uh, retrieving a recent backup and sticking the stuff back in there properly. Mm -hmm. Martin, do you have a question, or are you just nodding in acknowledgement? Oh. No. Okay. All right. So if there are no further questions, it's your last chance right now. Okay. That was very interesting. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, could I make an addition? I just wanted to mention, Please. of the people that were on that fourth excursion, we still see Chuck Moore. He comes to our uh, chapter meeting, usually in November every year. He lives in Northern, uh, Northern uh, Nevada. His wife passed away about 10 years ago, oh, yeah. but uh, he's still very active. Uh -huh. Back to you. Well, we, we had, uh, we had uh, the cool, um, well, it would be great to meet you in person because you are a great figure of force missing still for me meeting in person. I was able to meet uh, force in uh, two years ago in Edinburgh, but I have to meet you next year somewhere else, hopefully. Okay, well, uh, oh, sorry, there's a question uh, to Nick uh, from uh, Twitch. I'm going to read it. Is the database shared between all machines? Instances, i.e. Uh, the database in, is in a central configuration repository for all machines. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the answer is um, it depends. Um, if we're automating a very large factory, uh, then, um, and, and you know, we're, we're looking for quite high reliability here. And so uh, generally there is one central uh, database, uh, but there are replications to other sort of copies of the database in various different places. Um, and every 
part of the um, automation system which controls individual sections of the plant um, also has um, automatic fallback to a local database. So it all depends. If it's a much smaller factory, of course, it's just got one, one central database. Uh, thanks for explaining that, Nick. I'm afraid this is also the last question. 